Get it, girl. What? Are we in Africa? Nope. This is Texas Hill Country, mister. Now, I'd heard that this place was super fancy, but this? Didn't expect this. This is the Long Neck Manor. It's a conservation park slash boutique hotel. Totally over the top. And that's why we chose to stay here. Show everyone how extravagant hill countries become. Because there's not a lot of places where you can do stuff like this in Texas. Texas Hill Country is kind of a not well-known place right in the heart of central Texas. It's unlike any other part of the state. It's not crowded yet. There isn't any oil drilling or skyscrapers or illegal alien camps. There aren't any homeless people yet. It sure is nice. It sure is fancy. That's why I'm here. This was the last stop on our big old Texas adventure. And I'm glad I saved this place for the end. Because it's been a lot. Time for a break from all of that. Well, folks, this is the last stop in Texas. The end of the line. And as you can probably tell, this cowboy is tuckered. And we're going to mosey around hill country for a little bit and get to know what it's like in one of my favorite parts of Texas. There's some good folks up here. Salt to the earth. And I bet they even have whiskey too. You want to impress somebody in Texas? Tell them you live in Texas Hill Country. They'll be like, damn, must be nice. So what is Texas Hill Country anyways? Well, it's this part of central southish Texas. It's about the size of West Virginia. It's a region that's kind of on the border between where the American Southwest ends and the Southeast begins. To the West, it's desert. Like this. Then you turn a corner and the mountains start. And, well, it begins to feel like a whole nother state. You don't feel like you're in Texas here. There's valleys and rivers. It's just super pretty and wonderful. It's a very unique part of the state. And probably the most pristine part of the state. It's a lot of rolling hills, small towns, farms. And just nature. Find a no man's land. For now. Hey guys. This whole region's become one of the most popular areas that people are moving to now. Talk to people who are leaving their overpriced and overcrowded hoods. And they'll be like, We'd love to live in Texas Hill Country one day. That'd be great. The whole area has boomed so much that the gap between Austin and San Antonio might get all filled in. All of this. They say one day, this will all be one big giant metro area. I know. We're going to ruin something else. There's a lot of smaller cities scattered throughout the Hill Country these days. If you're not from Texas, you might not have heard of many of them. New Braunfels, Dripping Springs, Bernie, Llano. A lot of the cities up here in Hill Country might make sense for a family. 
you'd be close enough to a big city to justify the commute and it's kind of family friendly there's things to do but not Fredericksburg forget about that notion this place has been found and it's been turned into a big racket This is going to kind of be the opposite of many of the stories I tell. This isn't a tale of a city being ruined by decay and crime and laziness and a loss of jobs. Uh-uh. This one's about too much success. There's 11,000 people in Fredericksburg now. It's not really grown very fast. But it's changing a lot. For a long time... This was just kind of a smallish little village tucked away in the Texas hillsides. 50 years ago, it was a no stoplight, gas station on every corner kind of place. And then some people figured out how nice it was here, and a bunch of antique stores opened up. And then one day, somebody said, hey, we can grow wine here pretty well. And then that was it, folks. Today, it's the second largest wine region in the country, only behind Napa. And some are now calling this the Aspen of Texas. This is sort of a tourist trap playground for the rich thing nowadays. Fredericksburg is more La La Land than anything else. They say there's a hundred fine restaurants and 150 fancy shops here. Most of the upscale stuff is right here along Main Street. Downtown has all the things you'd expect to find in an upscale touristy place with a lot of history. It was called the most picturesque city in the country. And I can see why. Everybody talks about the architecture here. Well, it's German. The whole area was settled by Germans for the most part. And 40% of the population here still has German ancestry. Look at that map. I know, right? Why did the Germans come here? Well, I'll tell you. In the 1830s, Germany was kind of a crummy place to live. A lot of people wanted religious and political freedoms, so they came to America. A bunch of their influential leaders wound up making their way to this part of Texas. And then they rode home and they were like, this place is amazing. So they settled all these little towns and cities that we see all over the region. By the 1900s, 5% of Texans were German. The Germans brought in all their traditions, their music, their food, their belief in public education, and their belief in community over the individual. It was a lot of stuff that pioneers of the American West did not believe in. They built churches and they built a bunch of buildings that are still standing today. And they made a lot of them out of the limestone they found in the hills nearby. Even though Fredericksburg's been ruined by commercialism, you can see they're still trying to make it look somewhat like the old days. Waterburger looks nice. A limestone Waterburger? What? The old inn looks nice. And the bank, the convenience store, the HEB. They all have limestone looking stuff. They all look very German, don't they? Even the Walmart has limestone. Even the Chinese place. Sadly, though, a lot of the German influence is no longer with us here. Tourism and wealthy people have diluted almost all of it out of here. Oh. 
Now, Fredericksburg isn't a very rich place, but it's expensive to live here. Home prices just topped 500 grand on average. And good luck finding something for sale without a big bidding war. You gotta have some real scratch to live up here now. There's a lot of rich celebrity types that have homes up here. They say there's more millionaires per capita right here than any other region in Texas. Most people just can't afford to move here anymore. It just doesn't make sense. And then the people that have lived here for a long time, they're being pushed out by people with deeper pockets. All the tourism workers, they have to drive in from who knows where. And teachers, nurses, cops, firefighters, none of them can afford to live here anymore. Back in the day, Fredericksburg was much more intimate and small towny. Everybody knew their neighbors and people felt like they belonged. People volunteered and took pride in the place. Everybody knew each other and they looked forward to the flowers in the spring and then the peaches in the summer. There were parades and county fairs and it all felt very Americana. It was a middle class place where even the wealthy people lived a frugal lifestyle and were discreet about their finances. <laughs> Not anymore, though. I heard that in some of the neighborhoods like this, there might be maybe one or two houses that somebody actually lives in full time. The rest are all short-term rentals and second homes. The middle class here is being sent away packing. A local realtor in town told me he thinks Fredericksburg is on the brink of a crisis because of the soaring property prices. Good Lord, does it ever end? Look at some of these listings. This one is eight million bucks. It has five bedrooms and three bathrooms, and it's 5,000 square feet. Eight million bucks. And then check this place out. 2.2 million for that? What is happening? This is the kind of place that old, old, old money lives now. And to them, all this stuff is just a guest house, just somewhere to go for the weekend. A lot of the ranches outside of town, they're being sold off to developers. The kids inherit them and they're like, what do I want a ranch? I don't want this shit. So they sell it out. They're going to be putting big old homes out here one day. And you're just driving around, you see really pretty nature and rolling countryside and I'm like, are the rich people going to come out here and just tear all this down and just build impressive stuff as far as you can see? The answer is probably yes. So I asked somebody at the Visitors Bureau, I was like, where's the cheap homes in town? And she was like, there aren't any, LOL, Nick. They're all overpriced now. I mean, there's some streets where stuff isn't completely outrageous, but more and more they're getting snagged up and fixed up and flipped and sold. I did my best to find the most regular street in town, like the bad side of town. Here it is. Just about everything on this street's more than 600 grand. It looks just like a regular street to me. It's not even that fancy. But I do have to say, it is super nice here. You can't deny that. It's really pretty. It's very safe. They have a huge tax base because of all the tourists, like me. It's just a rich person's playground up here. There's golf courses all over. 
Some golf courses cost 100000 a year in dues. Well, most of the rich people, they don't even live here year-round. They take in their private jets from all over. They come to town, they pound wine, eat German food, buy expensive hats, and then go home after the weekend. Hill Country is a lot more than just Fredericksburg, though. That's just the most well-known fancy place here. Now I'm going to show you a lot of the other stops we took in Hill Country in another video. But briefly, there's New Braunfels. It's one of the many booming burbs in the San Antonio metro area. We drove around for a little bit. We saw their little downtown. It's very nice and quiet. Probably not for long, though. And nearby is San Marcos and another burb called Bernie out this way. Just middle class people trying to get away from the big cities. And then we turned a corner one day, came across a place called Fisher, Texas, and I saw the Devil's Backbone Tavern. And I was like, stop the car! That kind of place. There's been a lot of cowboys and cowgirls that have had their hearts broken in this little honky tonk. I wish I was there to see it full throat. <laughs> they don't make them like this anymore. It's the last bit of Texas left. My favorite place in Hill Country was a little town called Bandera, population 800. I think they call this the cowboy capital of the world. I'm going to show you a lot more of Bandera in another video. But this place is my kind of place. And man, they love them some Trump in this part of Texas. We found a whole store that's just Trump shit. Look at that. Did you know Trump stole the election? I think you mean that Joe Biden stole the election, Mappy. No, I mean the first one. He shouldn't have won that. Russia helped. Now you better keep them words out of your mouth or there's going to be fire on you. Donald Trump is a man of his word. He's a man of faith just like me. And he's always had us cowboys backs. Now you stay off of that Facebook. It's ruining your damn mind. Look at this place. The Yeehaw Saloon is brand new. My kind of place, Fredericksburg. It's so new they don't even have the grain bin thing all the way set up yet. The Yeehaw, everybody. Okay, so there's no ghettos to film here. I know, I know you're disappointed. So we spent a lot of time checking out all the things to do here. Because, I mean, that's what makes the place so popular now, the experiences. One day we went beer and wine tasting. Our first stop was the Yeehaw Saloon. Buck you. We'll buck you too, damn it. Total Fredericksburg. Fake old Texas tourist trap. But cool anyways. They got all the things you can shoot in Texas hung on those walls. Well, not that one, but I don't think the tourists know the difference. Now next door, I got my first taste of hill country tourist fashion. There's an overpriced boutique to get your all hat, no cattle gear. Tourists love this stuff. Oh my God. Can you imagine that with my jacket? Texas Hill Country, where you can get blouses like that for only $49.95. As soon as you leave Hill Country, it gets rural pretty fast. Super neat landscape out here with a mix of rolling hills and farms. The most famous part of the area are all the wineries. There must be 50 wineries in this area. 
Now, some of the wineries are actual wineries with vineyards. Some are really fancy and some are regular Joe. It's really hit and miss. And I learned that the annoying way. First place we pulled into is a place called Grape Creek Vineyards that somebody in town told us we needed to go see. This place was fancy. You know what? They treat tourists like shit here. I don't know if they're trying to run the tourists out and make it like this exclusive place for locals only, but you can't just show up and taste some wine and look out over the vineyards and watch the sunset here. Nope. If you want to sit outside and have some wine, you got to pay big bucks and join as a member. The Wine Member Club. Only then can you see the sunset. We got that vibe many places we went to. I was like, who do you think you are? You're not Napa, damn it. Anyways, we left there and we drove around to many other places. All we wanted to do was find a patio, glass of wine, and watch the sunset. We hadn't seen the sun in two days. So we finally settled on this place. We pulled in. It's called Barron's Creek. It seemed more normal. They said we could sit outside. And you know what? This was pretty nice. They have a nice patio. Very charming. <laughs> the Instagram people all come here to take their pics. I saw a lot of that in Fredericksburg. I think that's why most people come to the Fred. So they can say they came. But then I wandered past the Instagram duo after that wasn't funny anymore. And I was like, I'm going to see their vineyard. So this place feels very elite. And $15 a glass, you feel, feels very important and stuffy and snobby. And then you come out here. Fredericksburg has a lot of work to do on their wine scene. Now I'm not a wine snob, but when you come to a winery and it's sunset and it's expensive and it's famous, you expect to see big billowing fields of grape vineyards off into the distance and just classy and there's literally <laughs> next door is like trailer park land <laughs> and then you've got like whatever that is and then like <laughs> this is it <laughs> this is their this is their vineyard out here <laughs> and goats Not romantic and not pretentious, but you'd think it would be based on how they treat you and how everybody's dressed up and everyone's posing and in their best clothes and very stuffy inside. Feels very important. <laughs> and this is the vineyard right here. This is funny. Welcome to Fredericksburg. <laughs> And I don't see a single grape on these sorry little vines. But it's a beautiful night. No complaints. <laughs> I'm sorry. After some wine, I just thought that was so giggly. And then look at their member-only area here. This doesn't look very exclusive to me but they have a flat screen TV. And the bathroom's nice here. Look at the bathrooms in here of candles. Anyways, I just had to point this out because I'd heard all about the winery scene here. Everybody's like, oh my God, Hill Country has these beautiful wineries and they're like so amazing. I did see a lot of really pretty wineries and saw some really neat stuff, but everybody here was so snobby and full of themselves. And to be honest, the wine's really not that good either. If I hadn't ever been to a real winery before, I guess I'd be impressed, but I was not. So we went back downtown. On night one, everybody said you gotta go to Otto's. It's this famous German bistro. Well, we walked all the way down there and we ended up not going in because frankly, it didn't look like a lot of fun. But then we heard some music down the road and so we went here instead. Now, this was a lot of fun. It's called the Silver Creek. It's right on the main drag. You don't have to 
Of course, we had to get German food our first night we were here. I went with the German sausage plate, which had bratwurst and knockwurst and pepperwurst. All the worse. Mm -mm -mm. And let's look at the complicated German beer list. I was like, I can't even pronounce that. So I asked the guy, can I please get a German beer in one of those big German mugs and a shot of German chocolate cake? And the next day for breakfast, we got more German fare. We went to the old German bakery and restaurant downtown. And this place is a scene. Sunday morning and everybody wanted in. I went with the German sausage omelet, the German potatoes, the German pancakes, the German coffee, and the German water. I was disappointed by the German pancakes. They don't really have any flavor unless you add sugar and lemon juice to them. Then they're good. All Count Fredericksburg. So after breakfast, got a German beer, we walked around to look at all the shopping. Yes, you can drink on the streets here. Now the shopping here, I could do a whole video just on the shopping. Tourist elite is the best way I can describe it. Just a bunch of crap you don't need, but you're here, so you want it. Ba Farmhouse and Kitchy Galore. Every place we went into smelled like cinnamon and pumpkin spice and had so much unnecessary, it was overwhelming. I thought it was silly. Looking good, Fredericksburg. They have German steins. No one needs that, but you gotta have one. You're in Fredericksburg. They have hats here that I think were very poorly designed. Am I the only one that thinks that they designed that terribly? And then all the boots that probably only rich tourists buy. Look at that. They are expensive. This place actually had a sign in the window. Don't take pictures. I was like, okay, I won't. I'm not going to show your boots to a million people. Promise. One of the tourist traps we walked into had Lone Star's ice down in a cooler. I was like, now that's my speed. Before we came, I asked somebody what downtown Fredericksburg was like. She told me it's like a country urban Magnolia Disneyland now. Whatever that means. That night, went out for a drink at the Crossroads Saloon, which is apparently a big deal downtown. But they were rude there too. It's just another over the top, trying too hard to be old Texas joint. And I was like, why is everybody so rude here? People that work here, the tourists, everybody had a damn attitude. So anyway, we wound up settling on a much more chill spot called the Aldorf Beer Garden with a T. And of course, more German shit. That's Spatzla with cheese in it. It was maybe the best thing I had on the entire trip, except for the tacos I had in Austin, like day four. Look at this. This is totally Fred. Our first two nights, we stayed in a place called the Wine Country Cottages. It was a blast. It's this little cottage village. It's just a few blocks walk from downtown. And they put us up in the Petit Chateau. What? This little chateau. 
wonderful little place, just blocks from Main Street. And man, are they good. They left us these German pastries in the room. I texted them and I was like, what is this heavenly concoction? She told me they're called sweet German pretzels. I was like, I love these. I tried to find another place in town that had them and I could not. German beer, it's okay. German wursts, they're okay. But the Germans sure do know how to make sweets. And by the way, if you want to learn about where you should live, you should go to my website, homesnacks.com slash findyourplace. On my website, you get tips on where you should move and what the costs are and a whole lot more. It's like an AI Nick Johnson consultation for free. Plus there's gear that you can buy and more. That's homesnacks.com slash findyourplace. Try it today. And I'm on Cameo too. If you want me to send you or somebody you know a personalized video message, go to Cameo and search Nick Johnson YouTube. It's fun. And now back to the show. Uh oh. <laughs> Are there any scraps, Noel, that we can get them out of yeah, here? Yeah, And then there's the Long Neck Manor. That's the place I showed you at the beginning. Now, this place is over the top, kind of like a circus. It's very exclusive. They only have a few villas on site. They want to keep it that way. They want to make it a very intimate, up close with nature kind of place. And they put us in the Twyga Villa. <laughs> and y'all, this is the villa that we're in called Twyga. And Check this place out. And right outside your door, <laughs> rhinos, right outside your back door. Hey guys. Yes, rhinos and giraffes, right off your back porch. You're the most spoiled rhinos in the whole country, I bet. They're spoiled. And so were we. This one even decided to pose. Look at all that poop. Need more than a shovel to clean up after them though. More than time with the tractor. Now you get really up and close with the animals. They have four giraffes and three rhinos on the property. Oh, look at this. And they all know what they're doing. We got to feed and pet the giraffes first. Here I am feeding Betty. She's a good girl. And look, here comes the baby giraffe running over when my manager offered her some lettuce. Her name's Keely, like Keela Manjaro. Give her a little pet on her little nose. Well, I'm gonna feed her first because she came over to me. Bring he it made on. us a painting. Oh, what? Lucky. Oh my goodness! This is so you wild. are the most spoiled giraffe <laughs> like in the whole U.S. <laughs> Can I shoot it, please? Well, Mappy, normally I'd say they're protected, but. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to know what they taste like myself. But we better leave them alone. Shouldn't act like savages out here, where they're guessing all. What about the rhino, though? They have three rhinos here. Fred, Barney, and Justin. And we got to spend some time with Fred. They put some hay out to make him kind of hang out over by us. He's super cool. Yes, I am. You pet him, it kind of feels like you're playing with an old purse okay. filled with sand. I think my manager liked the rhinos more than I did. I got to make a rhino painting. That was cool. They said it was the best rhino painting they'd ever seen. I think they were just saying that though. And then my manager had to clean up the paint. 
I think she wanted a rhino after that trip. Just take a baby rhino home in the bag with us. Put it on the plane. And then I got to kiss a giraffe. Looks to me like the other one was a little bit jelly. So giraffes and rhinos are slowly becoming extinct. The Long Neck Manor's goal is to grow their animal population and provide an intimate experience with the animals. It's a wonderful place. And by the way, that's Valkyrie. She's the best guide ever. And then at the end, we, they were like, you want to come play with the sloth? And I was like, you're a sloth? His name's Bruno, and he licks dirt. After we fed him his morning vegetable breakfast, it was back to bed for Bruno. What a trip. So on my last morning on this Texas trip, I had coffee and hung out with rhinos. I know, pretty good last day, huh? Sitting out here on this preserve, you don't really feel like you're in Texas. I liked Fredericksburg, and I liked Texas. Kinda. I saw a lot of change and growth and complaining and bad stuff in this state. But there's some good here, too. I'm just glad I waited until the last day to come visit with these animals and to spend time out here in nature like this. It would have been a really crummy way to end the trip if I had ended up in Fifth Ward in Houston, looking at bums in Austin, or watching illegal aliens climb into our country by the thousands. And what a trip. Look at the odometer when we first picked up the rental back in Austin a month ago. And look at it now. And here's the final map of where we went. Tried to cover as much as we could in a month. I think we did a pretty good job. As we got onto the plane the final night in Austin, I thought, you know what? I don't really think I need to come back here again. I mean, I loved me some Fort Worth. And there were parts of Houston that I liked. And there were some highlights along the coast. But is Texas amazing? No. I don't feel like I'm going to miss it here like I did out west. I can go back to Wyoming and Montana and Idaho all over again. To me, Texas just seems like a regular place now. Well, folks, that's just about it. The Texas adventure is over now. There's not enough I can say about my home state. The place is still wonderful, but clearly it's changed. And that ain't good. Now, my partner and I are going to saddle up and mosey on down to our next journey. I hear we're going to Wisconsin next. <laughs> well, hell, it's cold up there. So I should probably switch my cover and throw on this. See you there, folks. So Long Neck Manor is the fruition of our owner and founder, Rick Baranji's life goals. He spent about 50 years in the animal care and conservation industry. He was the director of the Houston Zoo for about 18 years. He was also one of the lead Disney Imagineers who put in the Animal Kingdom at um, Florida. So this is his life work, his passion. He's been um, in the conservation and animal community for a very long time and has garnered um, a very well received reputation within that industry. And instead of making a one time donation that would have done a lot of good, he decided he wanted to create something that would live on in perpetuity and continue to educate people and be able to support our conservation efforts for years and years to come. It's great that we can bring people here and share the conservation message and educate them and get them excited about animals. Um, but it's also wonderful that we can keep raising money and donating money and putting boots on the ground in Africa and Asia to preserve these species. 
And that's one of the greatest things about Long Neck Manor is that not only do you get to come and have a wonderful experience with the animals, choose to stay in one of our overnight accommodations, but even when you visit us just for the day, a portion of your ticket goes straight to our conservation partners. And these are partners that our owner, Rick Baranji, has built a personal relationship with over the years. It's not someone that we read about and we're just sending a blank check to them. Um, he's actually visiting Africa quite, quite often throughout the year and hand delivering the monies that we raise. We know exactly where your money is going to, the boot for the rangers, the water hole that it helps build, the new fencing at these facilities. So we're really proud that we can show people exactly where your money is going and how it's being spent so that you really feel an ownership and a direct connection to what you're helping preserve. Howdy folks. It's been a good time here in Fredericksburg in Hill Country. Drinking my whiskey in my hot tub. Go on, get. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country. And I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.